Coog's house. Sorry if I look like really tired from recording. I just stayed up before this watching the Rockets game, a, a rebuilding team, come back, beat the Philadelphia 76ers and James Harden at home. It felt great. Speaking of rebuilding teams, let's talk some Houston Cougar football. You are locked on Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, the daily podcast about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Angel, here to break down all things Cougs. If you U of H fan or just a hater came to step by, please be sure to hit subscribe down below. That way we can pop up in your news feed each day. You can make sure to make us your first listen of the day. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is, I hope you're seeing me on the YouTube channel. It's good to see you. Um, and, and I would say, like, we're building this thing up. We're up over 130 followers so far already. Again, that's we're not quite three full weeks into this thing. Remember, when we get to 250 subscribers, I am going to give away a Marcus Sasser t-shirt from an artist on Etsy. I'm working to get that artist on. I know I said that a while back, but we really are going back and forth. Um, and it's it's a cool, cool design. And honestly, to make sure we get that, you have to make sure we subscribe, get to 250 follow subscribers. Once we get there, we're going to find someone that's been commenting on videos. Make sure you leave comments as well. If you don't have anything to say about the Houston football team but want to leave a comment, I don't know. Tell me what you think about Jalen Green's hair. Um, so as we look at the football season, um, frankly, there's part of me that is like happy we're in bowl season. And part of me is like, oh, my God, how is this thing not over yet? So today on today's show, we're going to kind of have a show that kind of rides that roller coaster a little bit. In the first segment, we're going to look at what bowl game we're heading to and what we know about the Independence Bowl. Second segment, we're going to look at kind of a waving farewell to Tank Dell because of a big announcement he made on Monday. And then in our third segment, we're looking at like this giant transfer portal thing and make as much sense of it as we can in the present moment. This is an all football show. It's fairly basketball heavy time of year for us right now. If you're like looking for more basketball talk, broke down the St. Mary's game on Monday. Make sure you go check that out. I'll be breaking down the North Florida game on Wednesday. So make sure you check that out. Right. Um, we're also going to be previewing the Alabama game later this week, talking to guys from uh, Houston NIL and kind of all those kinds of things around the basketball program as well. So sit tight. But today is going to be a football centric episode. Um, I didn't mean to wear my Nike stuff for the football episode, but that's where we're at. All right. So the bowl game, um, we're heading to the Independence Bowl. It's December 23rd um, and it's at two o'clock and it is in Louisiana. Now, I have to say um, that. It's nice to uh, – Shreveport, Louisiana, I should say. It's nice to have a bowl game we can drive to that is kind of a different place. We don't typically get to go to Shreveport, Louisiana. It's the first time we've gotten to go to that bowl game. I also think it's – I'm looking at my notes here. Sorry if I'm looking down too much. But I think it's interesting to note that um, it's the first time either of these teams, us or the University of Louisiana, are in the Independence Bowl. And an Independence Bowl spokesperson said it was like the first time in a long time that both teams have been able to drive to the game. I think it's interesting to say, like, it's kind of a regional thing. It's not quite the Power 5 matchup I was hoping for. If you've been following me on Twitter at Panthers 512 I was notably looking forward to, like, maybe getting to play, like, a Mill Road Auburn with a new coach in the Gasparilla Bowl or something crazy like that, right? Um, I was, guess, a little hopeful for that. Um, I'd say I want to play Colorado, but I don't want to be Coach Prime's first game. Um, so I think that's interesting because, like, this feels like a very winnable game. Get to that part in a second and obviously preview it in much more in depth as we get closer to kickoff. Um, but it's two teams that haven't played since 2006. So it's not like, like they're very close in uh, mileage. Like, we're not that far away from uh, Louisiana, the University of Louisiana. But I do think it's interesting to say that, like, we don't play each other often because they're not in the American Conference. Obviously, Houston's moving up to the Big 12 Conference next season. Um, and so, you know, it's not really going to be the kind of team we see a whole lot of. Frankly, the goal for this program, or for the Houston program, is to be like a few years from now, we schedule the Louisiana's of the world kind of as a cupcake warm-up before a big game, right? Like, that's kind of the goal. And so it's a little disappointing to have to play them this week, not because I think we're, like, going to outmatch them. I don't. I think it's going to be a fun game. Uh, but because like we're aspirational to do other things, right? Um, I do think it's interesting to look at uh, Tank Dell has said he will play. Um, the announcement, we'll talk more about Tank in a moment, but 
the announcement was that he's going to go to the NFL draft, so come back for his senior season. Um, but he will play in this game, which I think helps reassure us all that Clayton Toon will play in this game. I think there's some talk on the internet about whether or not he will play in the, in the football game, and I think that it sounds like all pointers are that he will. I'm sure having his number one target, Tank Dell, back will help. But I kind of think he wants the chance to show off on national television. And I think that Clayton Toon is going to come back and play quarterback for us this week, or this game, I should say, not this week, um, because of that chance to show off. Because, frankly, the season kind of ended on a dud. So much so that uh, Coach Hogerson actually said so in his media availability afterwards. Um, after the announcement, he said that um, he felt like, quote, he – owed people a win. And when asked to be more specific, he's meant both the players, coaches and the fans, right? Like that the season ended on a letdown and not getting to go to a bowl game after that, even though they were just seven and five would be kind of rough. I also wonder, we talked about throughout this year, you and I have anyway about like uh, Renu Couture, the president of the university, not the AD, the president of the university said a while back several years ago at this point that they're going to fire coaches for going eight and four. He knows he needs this eighth win, so I think he kind of wants this bowl game for the, those reasons as well. And looking kind of big picture at uh, Louisiana, um, the only common opponent was Rice, and they lost to Rice. Houston beat Rice, but if you remember that game, <laughs> yeah, you remember, you're not. That, at the end of the game, it was kind of tough, right? Um, they had the McCaffrey kid. They had one of those McCaffrey kids, and he kind of tore us up a little bit. Um, and so I feel like, while we beat Rice and they lost to Rice, I'm not going to go complete transitive property on that. Um, I don't know necessarily that it's, it's fair to say that. I do think, obviously, that Tank Dell and Clayton Toon playing helps because if either or both of them missed it, you couldn't th- go to that, right? If I look at Louisiana Lafayette's like pro football focus grades on the Rice game, um, again, remember, we've cited these several times, but it's worth pointing out that like uh, in the 70s is all right. Uh, upper 70s is pretty good. Um, their offense as a whole, as far as being the right place, right time, making the right reads and those kinds of things, in the Rice game ranked a 57.7. Their pass blocking ranked a 54.6. Um, I, if they were in the high 60s, I might be making some statement here. But this kind of game looks like to me that like Sack Avenue and the defense line ought to eat it up. I feel like that's a big, big moment for them. And I feel like this is kind of a good chance for them. Several of them I feel like were kind of like, feeling snubbed or I pointed online. I feel like they were snubbed from all conference recognitions and things like that. I think Houston's bad record and frankly, poor defensive play as a whole really kind of hampered that unit from getting recognized because Houston's defensive line was an incredible strength and bluntly one of the best in the country, even though the rest of the defense around it might not have been, uh, or didn't surely didn't play like that. Right. So I, I think that we'll see some big play out of them. Obviously D'Anthony Jones, defensive end, edge slash three technique will have a big day. And I think that it's the kind of big day that will launch him into <laughs> big football down the road for him. Um, I also think that like, it's the kind of game like that and um, my opinion, the best no tackle in the American conference uh, who didn't make somehow did not make an uh, all conference team. Um, much to the dismay of many UH coaches, um, the U of H coaching staff was very, very much publicly upset about that. Um, I think it'll be a chance for him to kind of show that um, because I, I look at this offensive line grades across the season, both in run and pass. I, I look at their size and strength up front. I don't know the Louisiana's going to be able to block him. On the back half of their defense, I don't think I want to cover Tank Dell. I think this kind of game where Tank Dell is coming back to play this game before going to the Senior Bowl and then to the NFL Draft because it's a chance for him to show off that he has pro speed, right? Like it's a chance for him to show that off on the outside and the edge. And that's frankly probably where he will eat. We have the defensive line eating probably where he will eat. And speaking of eating, this show is brought to you by Omaha steaks. Um, now, have you ever thought about giving someone food? I mean, we all love food for the holidays, but you're almost like giving someone food for the holidays. The holidays are here. and You can achieve gift greatness when you give the gift of perfectly aged, tender and delicious Omaha steaks. The steak experts at Omaha steaks have put together special curated gift packages to help take the guesswork out of gift giving and make you a holiday hero. Go to omahasteaks.com and take advantage of 50% off site wide. Use promo code locked on at checkout. Get an additional 
$30 off of your order. Send an assortment of mouth-watering flavorites, uh, guaranteed to impress, like the legendary butcher's cut of filet mignon, the uh, air-chilled boneless chicken. Look at their menu right now. It's got ultra-juicy burgers. It just sounds good in the middle of the night right now. Um, super easy, like comfort meals. They just have to plug in and go. And I know that's, as a teacher, that's how I'm eating a lot of my meals. Um, Omaha Steaks, are they're ready to ship. Right away, you get shop early. Get the, you can beat the rush. Uh, go to OmahaSteaks.com. Use promo code LOCKEDON at checkout. Omaha Steaks is a gift from the heart, a gift that will be remembered with every unforgettable bite. Order with complete confidence today, knowing you're ordering the very best. Visit OmahaSteaks.com, 50% uh, site-wide, plus promo code LOCKEDON at checkout to get extra 30% off of your order. Minimum order may be required. Now, I think what's interesting here is that um, Tankdale is going to use this game as a chance to show off, right? Tank Dell is going to use this game as a chance to show off because he kind of didn't get to in the final game of the season, right? Um, in that Tulsa game, look, he had he had like three drops in the fourth quarter, and I don't, I don't mean like, oh, he got his hands on the ball, he's got to catch the ball. I mean, like, we've seen Tank Dell make those catches, and I wonder if there was some back of his head moment like this is my final game in Houston and there was something going on there I also wonder if just bluntly we've put so much on his shoulders as the leading wide receiver of this offense for a while now that like he was a little worried about it but I do think that as a whole um, Tank Dell is the kind of guy that needs this game to elevate his draft stock and he is going to use it as such. So on Monday, when Tank Dell announced to the world with a highlight video thanking Houston, and frankly was very happy to plug how much how much of a great time he's had in his three seasons in Houston, he was very much like, I'm also going to play in the bowl game, but then I'm going to the draft. Um, in Houston this season, he had 103 catches, 1,354 yards, uh, 15 touchdowns, for reference, the next highest catch uh, number on the Houston roster is in the 40s. The next highest yardage number on the roster is in the 700s. The next highest touchdown number is barely making double digits. This is a difference maker in what we do offensively, and we're going to miss him a whole lot. Uh, Tank Dell notably uh, went to Alabama A&M originally. Out of, uh, he went to high school in Daytona, Florida. Went to Alabama a &M, then went to Independence, uh, the community college in Kansas, probably best known for its time at Last Chance U. He was there right after that. Um, so he, he was not on the show, obviously, but like I think he got to use that, like the same pub around the show, frankly. And seeing how many pros were coming out of that program, I'm sure steered him in that direction. This has been like in his, you know, like this is the goal for all of these kids, right? And that's very much been front of mind for him. So from Independence, he came to Houston right at the start of the pandemic. He played his COVID year, which is also his first sophomore year. But then the COVID years don't count, so it wasn't his sophomore year. Um, he had eight catches – or sorry, played eight games that season, had 29 catches. Pretty stacked Houston roster from that season. And then the following season, the year after, in his like second sophomore year, because the COVID year doesn't count for things, um, he had – Four, he played all 14 games, had 90 catches for 1,300 yards. Remember, that was when Houston went 12 and two, and got like moved, got like promoted in a lot of ways to the Big 12 Conference. And like, I don't know that Houston gets to do that if Tank Dell isn't doing those kinds of games, or isn't having those kinds of games in third ward. Like, I, I don't know that it, that Houston gets the nod there, gets the invite there, if they're not kind of riding that hot hand with him leading the way on the offensive side of the ball. Obviously, the, the Houston defense that year had a couple guys. I, you know, Marcus Jones at the plant making big time plays on the defensive side and I guess also on the offensive side for New England. He was a big part of that too. I don't mean to say it was just Tank Dell, but offensively, it was a lot of Tank Dell, right? And so I think we all had high hopes for coming into his junior season this fall um, because we expected kind of a pickup where he left off. And individually, I think he did, right? And individually, I think he did. Um, we mentioned how crazy the stats are and how much different they are than everyone else on the roster. Very clearly, Clayton Toon's favorite. And I've told you before, like I think Toon is a pro quarterback, and he's his favorite target for sure. I think what's interesting here is looking at his pro prospects. So, Clay, so I'm about to say Clayton Toon's pro prospects. We'll get to that episode, I promise. Um, 
Tank Dell is listed at 5'10", 155. I bet he's probably more like 5'9 and a half, a buck 51, right? Like, I, I don't mean to diminish him or anything like that. I'm sure he'll hit his protein shakes between now and combine day. Um, but he's just, he's just not very big. That doesn't mean those guys don't make it in the NFL, right? That does not. I mean, Deshaun Jackson just got picked up again. Those guys can only make it in the NFL. They can have a big, long career. It's just challenging. It's just really, really hard for a pure slot guy because he's so small. He, he's not going to get put to the outside for a pure slot guy to have a long career, especially when you're seeing like this transition in the NFL to where like everyone wants Travis Kelsey and Greg Kittle. That doesn't mean there's a bunch of those running around, but they'd rather have that tight end flexed off the ball than a slot guy in a lot of cases. And so Tank Dell is kind of coming in a niche position too. Um, if I'm looking at him, I'm looking at a lot of people smarter than me, haven't ranked as like a, a top 100 draft picked probably in the first three rounds, right? I think with a good Independence Bowl, Senior Bowl combine, you could see him elevate that some um, because, frankly, I'm sure some of that grade is also competition, right? American Conference doesn't put out pros. And, I mean, he played against Sauce Gardner. I digress, right? Um, but American Co- Athletic Conference doesn't put the same kind of pros as like the SEC or, or Big Ten or whatever. Um, I do think that you'll see him – perform at a high level in independence bowl and senior bowls. And so that might move up some, I think that the big deal here though, for him as silly as it seems, and we can argue about this online if you want to, but I do think this is silly is it's going to come down to the 40 time, right? Like at five, 10, 155, let's say he get, let's say he grows. Let's say he's five, 10 and a half and a buck 60. He's going to need to run the four, three, six. It says he runs online. Right. Um, I've seen the highest I've seen his 40 times at a four, three, six. And so that's what I'm working with because um, I'm sure he'll obviously train in straight line speed and be running his best at the combine. But he needs to run that at the combine t- to really show off here because that's where it's like, oh, the speed and separation will translate because we've seen him have the speed and separation across the American Athletic Conference. Again, the only corner who gave him much rub at all was Sauce Gardner. Um, but it looks like the American Athletic Conference. So it looks like he's running away from DBs that go to Tulsa, right? Or it looks like he's running away from DBs that, I don't know, uh, go to Rice or whatever, right? And some pro scouts, I'm like, yeah, he has separation, but like that Rice DB ain't going to make the league, right? But if he has that kind of speed, I think he will. I also think it's going to be important because um, we've seen in space, he is super hard to tackle in one-on-one instances because he's so wiggly. Um, and he gets a foot in the ground and gets upfield really quickly, and he changes directions very well. His low hips as he's running. Um, but none of that matters if you're not open to catch the ball in the first place. And with you know shorter guy, shorter arms, I don't know what his vertical will be. We'll see that at the combine. Um, he's going to have to have the speed to get the separation because he doesn't have the Megatron catch radius, right? He doesn't have that kind of stuff going on for him. And I think he's a pro. I I think he just has to perform well to get like that top three round, maybe even second round money. Right. Obviously first round money is the best. I I don't know that he's going to get that. He'd have to have a unreal next three months to have that. Kudos to him. If he does, I just don't know if it's going to happen, but excuse me. um, I just, I'm not betting on it. I, I just feel like at the end of the day, that's just not quite how he's built. Speaking of built, uh, today's episode is also brought to you by Built Bar. Uh, Built Bars are really, they're my breakfast right now. Um, as a teacher on the go and grabbing something quick out of the pantry, poof, grab it, go. Um, Built Bars are like this really great protein bar covered in real life chocolate. Uh, you got to try their new reimagined flavors. I got the list right here in front of me. Cookie dough topper. They have actual cookie dough on top. Uh, coconut brownie bar. Uh, there's a brownie bar brown new topper as well um anyone if you haven't tried built bars before they're the best tasting pro bars ever, protein bars ever built uh they this revol- revolutionizing nutrition thing with real chocolate 17 grams of protein shockingly low sugar and calories just 130 calories for 17 grams of protein with real chocolate uh sink your teeth in the first bite it'll change your life forever i'm not kidding if you there'll be a time before you eat these things and a time after you eat these things it's magical wonderful uh, you're probably wondering which flavor is my favorite i got really into and don't call me basic i okay you can call me basic 
I really like the pumpkin spice one going on. There was like a pumpkin spice puff one going on in the fall. I'm, I'm liking the granola ones right now. And then the cookie dough top is always really, really good. They're unbelievable. They're also different. You can order a mix box and they'll mix it up for you. You can pick whatever you like your favorite after that. You got to try this. You get uh, 15% off your order right now using promo code locked on 15 at built.com. That's promo code locked on 15 at built.com. All right. So in this third segment, um, we're going to talk about all of the other guys leaving the Houston Cougar football program. Um, and we're doing it in broad strokes right now because bluntly, as of the time of this recording, there are well over a thousand college football players in the transfer portal. Um, unprecedented, obviously. This whole thing's kind of been building up since the pandemic. If you are relatively new to college sports or like what the heck's going on, the pandemic was the first time we saw people, uh, we saw the NCAA wave the uh, universally wave the transfer rule way to set up when you got there to play. Um, that has since changed and kind of in this advocacy of student athletes as, as uh, you know, labor and sorts, they've waived that completely. And so now we're seeing a couple years later that the transfer portal is, is as commonplace as any other students transferring for whatever reasons. And as athletes, that means it's something we're all paying attention to. Right. So we're seeing again, over a thousand people in just on, by, on December 5th, just on the sing on Monday as itself, officially filed to be in the transfer portal. I mean, people had announced it beforehand. Some, including some people that really want to come to Houston. We'll see if they come or not. Um, but a thousand people in the portal is a big, big day for the transfer portal. And frankly, there's a, a number of Houston uh, Cougars in there as well. By my count and my research here, we're up to uh, seven. Um, and it's primarily underclassmen. Um, it's a lot of freshmen and redshirt freshmen Big fellas, and by big fellas, I mean like linemen that probably need another year or two um, to kind of get into their college bodies. What is frustrating here, um, and so again, we're going to speak on big, broad strokes because I don't necessarily know, A, by the time you're listening to this on Tuesday afternoon, if you're if you're not a morning person, you're listening to this Tuesday afternoon, this could all have changed. Like you'd have a whole bunch of transfers coming in and out. Um, if you're listening to this by like Thursday, I guarantee you things have changed, right? Like it is that kind of flying, that kind of fast. Um the trend, though, to me of a bunch of big guys leaving the U of H means that either A, they're finding somewhere they can play because the Houston offensive line, for all of its credit, like Clayton Toon is relatively protected a well all season, and they may feel like, you know, I'm not getting to play here, but I'm out, right? That's some of the stuff we're seeing is that. The other thing I'll say is that based on just heights and weights, um, Houston's going to the Big 12 next season, and they are looking for Big 12 offensive linemen. And that's power five football. And like some of these kids are really good kids. And I think could grow into that, but six, four, two forty, as a sophomore is not an offensive lineman in a big 12 program. And I, I don't mean that dismissively. I was undersized lineman played small, small school football. I get it. I also know that Houston, like Dana Holgerson is not trying to lose a bunch of games the first couple of years in the big 12. That's not going to work. Right, their stadium will become a their home stadium will become a road stadium. There are that many non U of H alums in the city of Houston. They can't let that happen, right? And so, what they're probably doing is a lot of these young underclassmen linemen. I would assume are seeing the writing on the wall with all of the other state of Texas, city of Houston, greater city of Houston kids filing themselves, putting themselves in the transfer portal. Right? Suddenly, it's like, oh, they're just going to go get those guys, right? Because the whole thing behind Houston going to big 12 is keep Houston kids in Houston. There's a ton of Texas, uh, Texas based linemen, a ton of Houston area based linemen in the transfer portal as we speak. Um, and, and so we'll see kind of how, how that thing plays out. The other thing I think is interesting here too, in looking at this is um, when you combine the portal and the graduation loss uh, for the Houston Cougars, you're losing more you're losing a, more than a fourth of your roster by a lot you're losing closer to a third a little maybe a little over a third of your roster um if all these guys officially transfer out because i did think about the transfer portal window is once, once you're in you don't have to leave um but if they all do leave we're looking at just over a third of the roster leaving right and so a there's part of me that's like that's a blank canvas dana hey coach holgerson go fix it right go get somebody to fix this thing there's also a part of me that's like 
Oh God, we were like a barely above average American Athletic Conference team last season, and we just lost our quarterback and our top receiver. And right again, of the eighteen people we have graduating or finishing college anyway, because some of them actually graduate undergrad earlier. That right of the eighteen people we have finishing finishing their playing career at the U of Houston this year, sixteen of them played significant snaps. Significant snaps mean like more than seventy five of their offensive defensive side, right? Like. That's a lot. Um, and so that's a lot of veterans to replace. And we're losing at least seven underclassmen that would replace them. Now, I'm not that worried about it because I think we've seen, <laughs> whether it's USC, um, who is literally like, you know, a, a, if they beat Utah either point of the season, then they played, then they'd probably be in the college football playoff. Um, or if what we're all assuming Coach Prime will do at Colorado or, or whatever – We've seen that these things can turn around like that. And I kind of think that there's a real, real chance that U of H follows suit there, right? They go get a couple of big linemen from Alabama that were born in Texas and want to come back to Houston, right? Uh, I mean, there are kids from North Shore. There are kids from Katy. There are kids from uh, uh, Huntsville, all over Power Five conferences that just got to get them back. And I think that you'll see... I would assume if I'm Dana, that big push initially, um, because if it gets transferring um, and they didn't go to U of H or didn't go to a Big 12 school or didn't go in the state of Texas, I'm sure you'll see them go get someone. Now, here's my hot take, and we'll see how long I ride with this, and this will be what I close this with. So if you listen all the way to the end, thank you. Here's my hot take. You won't see big fellas, receivers, etc. transfer into Houston until you see the quarterback transfer into Houston. I don't know who we're going to get. And I gave on last Friday's episode, my last segment was my top five guys in transfer portal at that point that I would have taken. Um, there's a whole bunch of the guys in there now that I would also take. I still think my top guy is Hudson card. Um, he he's transferring out of Texas, uh, UT Austin. That is, and there's like not a clear path for him to play there. He's from central Texas. So Houston would not be very far. And he went to UT. Uh, it sounded like, being close to home was important to him. U of H is not that far away. Um, but when power, moving into Power Five, it would be very clearly his program. He has three years of left. Da, 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 right. Um, I almost just wonder if he's too big a fish. But if they get a Hudson Card type guy, all of a sudden, that's a signal to all these other Power Five level transfer portal guys like, oh, they're about it, about it right now. Right. And I think that's a kind of movie you can see if they went and got Braylon Braxton, who I love out of Tulsa, great quarterback out of Tulsa, two, dual threat quarterback. Frankly, he beat Houston. Right. I could also see that triggering a different type of recruit coming to Houston, though. Right. And it's not that Braylon Braxton's not very good. I think he is. But in this first transfer portal window as Houston's heading into the Big 12, I think it's going to attract a different guy. I think it's going to attract more of a group of five looking to move up to power five kind of kid, as opposed to a power five looking to stay in the power five kind of kid. And that's fine. Just different kids. We'll see the program grows. We'll be talking about it all week long here at locked on Cougs. I'll be hitting at anything major breaks. I'll be here each and every day. So make sure you hit subscribe, make us your first listen each and every morning. If you want to talk to me about it more like when it happens, you can find me at Painsworth five one two. That's P A I N S W O R T H five one two on Twitter and Instagram and all your social media handles. I'll be able to talk all things Cougs, football, basketball, et cetera. As I said, I just watched the Rockets game right before. We can talk Houston Rockets, Astros. I hate talking about the Texans, but I guess we can talk about the Texans, whatever you like. Make sure you just find me there to communicate. We'll talk about all day long. I'm working on Discord. Shout out to the, the listener that uh, shot me a DM about Discord. We're working on getting that thing set up as well. It's all going Cougs. It's all going red. Thank you all so much. If you're looking for a second listen for the day, I'm going to recommend Locked On Big 12 um, because, A, that's the conference they're going to, and, B, they're doing a great job of following the transfer portal windows as well. And that's kind of where you see what the competition looks like as far as what kind of things I'm talking about that we are heading into. Thank you all so much again for tuning in today. Locked On Cougs is a proud member of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Go Cougs.